Well, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome to Read the Bible with Elder Linda. Uh, I am so excited. We are on our last chapter tonight on Matthew chapter 28. It, uh, it's been a journey. Um, hopefully you've learned quite a bit because I've been learning as I've been uh, reading it with you. And uh, this, like as I said, it's the last chapter and this is your first time coming aboard uh, here on this channel. We read the scriptures together. We make sure we understand what we're reading. And then we make some kind of application to our lives. Um, if you want to know, I, po I do post a new video every Wednesday. So if you want to be informed when the new video is posted, then subscribe to the YouTube channel called Read Through the Bible with Elder Linda. Uh, if you have any questions or comments about anything that we're studying, uh, please don't hesitate to comment. Uh, you know, and, and I appreciate feedback. If, if you're getting something out of the lesson, let me know that. That will be great. Uh, but last week we were in, well, we finished Matthew chapter 27. Uh, it took us about three sessions to finish uh, Matthew chapter 27 because it was a pretty long chapter. Um, and in that chapter we talked about, um, well, in, in last week's lessons we talked about the last few chapters about Jesus' burial and the posting of the guards at his tomb. Um, and, you know, because they had decided that uh, they wanted to make sure that the disciples didn't come along and steal Jesus' body. So they were going to post guards to the tomb, you know, at, the, at his tomb. And in actuality, what they were doing were, was actually assuring everybody that it was impossible for his disciples to steal the body because guards were posted at his tomb. And also they had sealed the tomb. So needless to say, uh, and, and we we're going to talk about that when we get to the book of John, they paid the, the guards to say that, that the disciples came and stole Jesus' tomb. They actually paid them, bribed them to say that. And that's the story that they told and the story that was circulating for years that the disciples stole Jesus' body uh, when he resurrected. But of course, we, know, we all know that was not true. <clears throat> he truly resurrected from the dead. And they made it impossible for his body to be stolen. So his body wasn't stolen. Uh, he was resurrected. And also, we, we uh, last week, we kind of recapped about the um, Passion Week and Holy Week, uh, the things that Jesus did Sunday through Sunday, uh, triumphal entry all the way to uh, Resurrection Sunday. So today, we want to start on Matthew chapter 28. And in this chapter, we're going to be talking about Jesus' resurrection we're going to talk about, just as we mentioned, the lies that the guards told about uh, someone stealing Jesus' body. And we're going to talk about the great, uh, the great commission that Jesus gives after he's on this earth for 40 days. Um, and, we, and if time permits, you want to talk about the appearances of Jesus. Because after he was resurrected, he was on this earth for 40 days, appearing, uh, making appearances to different people. And um, so we want to we want to mention that so we have an idea of who he appeared to um, in those forty days that he was here before he ascended into heaven. So let's just start with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Thank you, Father. Father, we just praise you. We honor you. We give you the glory. Lord, we're just so excited about studying your word and learning more about you, dear Jesus. Give us a hunger and a thirst after you you said he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled lord we want to be filled with more of you we want you to just fill us up to overflowing holy spirit we just invite you in to be the teacher come and just take over and teach us those things that we've not seen we give you all the glory in jesus name amen 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 it's such a privilege and an honor to study god's word um, you know, there was a time when people would, uh, weren't allowed, and there's still some places where people are not allowed to openly study the word. So we should take advantage of, of the fact that we have this opportunity to get to know the Lord, to learn his word. And I know it's taken us a little while to, to get through some of the chapters because uh, somebody told me once, uh, you know, you t it's taken a long time to get through when we went through Genesis. I think it took us a year to get through the book of Genesis. But uh, Genesis was a beginning chat, a beginning book of the Bible, and it had a lot of um, foundation that had to be laid in the book of Genesis. 
And to be honest with you, I am not in a rush to go through God's word, uh, especially if he wants to show us something. Uh, because uh, what good is it to read it all, rush through the Bible, and then not understand anything that you read? It's, it's kind of like a waste of your time. You don't really understand what you read. Uh, so, you know, I want us to get an understanding. You know, I don't want to just rush through it and read through it just to say we read through the Bible. You know, I want us to uh, get an understanding. I want us to pause and think about some things. I want us to allow the Holy Spirit to enlighten us as we read the scriptures. So uh, we're going to go the pace that he takes us. And because some chapters we'll probably go through quickly because he doesn't, is not a whole lot that he's revealing to us in that chapter or not a whole lot to be gleaned from the chapter. Uh, but there will be some chapters where we will be we will probably park there because the Holy Spirit wants us to learn some things. So we're just going to take it as the Holy Spirit comes, <clears throat> gives it to us. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. So let's just start. We're going to start in Matthew chapter 28. And we're going to start with verse 1. And I'm in the New Living Translation. Um, and, you know, for those that maybe have not been on the show, I, I use both Bibles. I use the New Living Translation. I also use the King James Version. Uh, the, I use a New Living Translation because it's just so much easier to understand. But you can always, if you want to know, you know, what the original, uh, some of the original words were, uh, you want to go back to your King James Version. And also, if you're doing studying with your concordances, like I have the Strong's Concordance, my Strong's Concordance is key to the King James Version of the Bible. So I, I use the King James Version of the Bible quite a bit. Um, in fact, this is the Bible that I grew up on. This is the Bible that I uh, learned the Word of God on. Um, this is the Bible that uh, that I, I've learned the scriptures on. So uh, I'm used to this Bible. But however, when I started reading the New Living Translation, it just made things so crystal clear. Uh, so that's why I like to teach from that so that we can get a clear understanding. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> so let's go to... Matthew chapter 28, verse 1, and we're talking about here the resurrection. It says, early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him and they fell into into a dead faint so the guards fainted <laughs> when they saw this angel so the guards saw the angel too and they fainted verse five then the angel spoke to the women don't be afraid he said i know you are looking for jesus who was crucified he isn't here he is risen from the dead just as he said he said just as he said would happen Come see where the body was lying, and now and now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and he is going ahead of you to Galilee, and you will see him there. Remember what I have told you. So this is first of all the angel talking to them, telling them that Jesus has, is, has risen from the dead, he's not there, and go tell his disciples to meet him in Galilee. Verse 8. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, <clears throat> but also filled with great joy, and they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. Verse 9, and as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. So now they met Jesus. Okay, first they saw the angel, now they're meeting Jesus. And they ran to him and grasped his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. Okay, so, so one thing I want you to notice right off is that the first people that he appeared to was women. You know, so that's a great honor. Uh, don't take that lightly. That's a great honor that he appeared to the women first and told them to go tell his disciples to meet him in Galilee. So he gave the women the message to give to the disciples. Uh, but let's just go back and, and talk about this for a minute because you have to really, when you put, you have to put all the gospels together, um, uh, to get the whole picture. And actually, uh, when it talks about early Sunday morning, um, 
one thing I wrote down from gathering from all the other scriptures is Mary, that it was Mary Magdalene, the women that went to the tomb, was Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, Salome, the mother of the sons of Zebedee, James and John. And this is according to Luke uh, verse 24, 10, that there were several other women that were there. Uh, there was a one, one gospel mentioned, mentioned Joanna. So there was more than just these two women that Matthew mentioned, but he just only named just those two. There was a lot of other women besides that. Um, and the women had, that Saturday night, they had, um, and when I say Saturday night, I mean Saturday evening after the Sabbath, because remember the Sabbath was Friday sundown, sunset to Saturday sunset. So when the sun set on Saturday, that means the Sabbath is over because Friday sunset to Saturday sunset was the block of time for the Sabbath and they were not supposed to do any work. They weren't supposed to do anything. So uh, after the Sabbath day of rest was over, the women went and purchased some spices uh, so that they could anoint Jesus for his burial. So as they, you know, they got all these spices ready, okay, it's Saturday evening. So they were plan they were planning on getting up early Sunday morning and going to the tomb so they can anoint his body and put add the spices and all that. So as they're going to the tomb, you have all these women going to the tomb and they're having this discussion of well, who's gonna roll the stone away for us? Because we're gonna get there and this this big giant stone there. So who's gonna how are we gonna get in get in? So they're having this discussion about who's gonna roll the stone away. And when they get to the tomb, the stone has been rolled away. And Matthew tells, talks about a, a, an earthquake in verse 2. Uh, suddenly there was a great earthquake. An angel came and, and actually sat on the stone. So, and, and mind you that <clears throat> the angel rolled the stone away, not so that he could let Jesus out. Jesus was not even there anymore. Jesus was already resurrected. He was already gone. Uh, he didn't have to have a stone rolled away because he can go through walls. So he can go through concrete and, and, and anything else. Uh, but the angel rolled the stone away because the women needed to see that he was risen. Not only the women, but his disciples, they need to know that he was risen. They need to be able to look in there and say, he's not there. He's gone. <clears throat> so... Um, In verses four, it talked about how the, the the guards were terrified and fainted, you know, and, and I guess you can imagine uh I they probably had never saw an angel just appear like that with with the earth uh shaking and the earthquake and all that, and they were petrified. So yeah, they fainted, they they fell out. Uh verse five through seven it tells us that the angel told the women not to be afraid that Jesus had risen just like he said. And they were also told, like we said, to tell his disciples to meet him in Galilee. So then the women ran from the tomb. They were, you know, they, they were a little, you know, that's a lot to see, you know, this angel appear. The women ran from the tomb and they were afraid, but they were had great joy as well. And uh, they told the disciples the message from the angel. But while they were on their way, it also tells us that, okay, not only had they just seen the angel, but now Jesus appears to them and they see Jesus. So he appeared to the women first. They see Jesus. And again, he tells them not to be afraid. And Jesus reiterates the message that the angel just told them, tell my disciples to meet me in Galilee and they'll see me there. So, um... One interest, interesting fact is that in Luke 24, you know, because sometimes the Gospels, um, you know, each Gospel is saying it from their perspective. And sometimes some some of them leave out some things that the other one will, will fill in. Because according to Luke 24, verse 1 through 12, it tells us that there was there was more than one angel, that there were two angels. Uh, Luke indicated there was two angels. And he's the one that gave the, the other name of the other woman, Joanna, and, and that there were several other women. Uh, Luke also, you know, was telling us that when they gave the, when the women went to give the message, and it sounds like Mary Magdalene was a spokesperson. So when, you know, when she gave the message and told the disciples that uh, Jesus was no longer there, that he had risen, well, it said that Peter jumps up to go see for himself. 
And in John chapter 20, verse 1 through 10, it's not just Peter, but it, we find out it's Peter and John. And remember, Peter and John are part of that inner circle of Jesus, the ones that he kept close to him, that he took on special uh, uh, missions with him. Well, Peter and John both rushed to the tomb to see for themselves. And then when they got there, they found that um, Jesus was not, Jesus had, was risen. So we're going to, I'm well, you know what? I'm going to go through some of the uh, appearances because after Jesus rose from the dead, he was on this earth for 40 days and he ap appeared to many people during those 40 days. And so if time permits, we're going to just go over that briefly of uh, all the people that he appeared to. But let's just go on to uh, verse 11 talking about the guards, the report of the guard. So verse 11, as the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and told the priest what had happened. A meeting with the elders was called and they decided to give the soldiers a large bribe. Hmm, well, listen to this. They told the soldiers, you must say that Jesus' disciples came during the night while we were sleeping and they stole his body. So you, you can't tell everybody that an angel came and, and rolled the stone away and, you know, that J Jesus was gone. You can't, you can't say that because they don't want people to know that Jesus, was, Jesus actually resurrected from the dead, as he said. Verse 14, if the governor hears about it, and the, uh, the, the priest and everything is telling the, the guards, if the governor hears about, uh, about the body being being stolen away. So we are going to stand up to, for you so that you won't get in trouble. In other words, they said, we're going to back what you say. So let them know that the disciples came and stole his body. And if the governor has any questions about it, we're going to back you up. We're going to, you know, back up what you said. So there's a little conspiracy going on here. So the guys accepted the bride and said that they were, that they were, and said what they were told to say. Their story spread widely among the Jews, and they still tell it today. So there is uh, that tells us right now there are there are plenty of people that still believe that Jesus wasn't resurrected. Somebody stole his body. They came and got his body. How they believe that I don't know. When they're the ones that uh, put plenty of guards around the tomb so that the disciples couldn't steal his body. And they sealed the tomb so the disciples couldn't steal his body. So they made it impossible for the body to be stolen. But yet when it was stolen, they wanted to spread the lie that the disciples must have came when we were asleep and stole the body. So if you were asleep, how do you know, how can you say that they came and stole the body if you were asleep? Okay, so it, it just, they're just not, it's, their story is just not gelling. It's not, it doesn't make sense. But this is the story they told. So, so if you look at some of my notes that I have here. Um, this incident about what the guards said, this is recorded only in Matthew. So the other gospels didn't even talk about um, the guards' reaction and how they fainted and all that. Um, now, according to... According to John, John chapter 20, verse 11 through 18, uh, it tells us that Mary Magdalene lingered at the tomb. So, so here you have Mary Magdalene and, and the other women, they go and tell the disciples that Jesus is risen. You got Peter and John who runs to the tomb to see that he's, rather not he's gone. So they get there and find out he's not there. And it, it appears that Mary Magdalene, after Peter and John had saw that he wasn't there, that she lingered a little bit, that she she stayed there. And Mary Magdalene, um, if you remember, she's the one that Jesus cast out demons. He casts a number of demons out of her. So uh, she was forgiven a lot, so she loved Jesus a lot. She had a lot to be thankful for. And so she lingered when the rest of them left, and she's crying and uh, wondering where uh, Jesus is and wondering what happened. So I just want to read that right quick in John chapter 20. I 
and I thought I had it marked, but I guess I did not. John chapter 20 and verse 11. Okay, it says in John chapter 20, verse 11, it says, Mary was standing outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she stooped and looked in, and she saw two white-robed angels, one sitting at the head and the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angels asked. Now, this is after everybody else has left, and she's still lingering around. Because they have taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they have put him. She turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Verse 15, I'm in John chapter 20, verse 15. And Jesus said to her, dear woman, why are you crying? And, and mind you, she don't know that this is Jesus talking to her. And Jesus asked her, who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. She says, sir, if you have taken away, taken him away, tell me where you have put him and I will go get him. So she is desperate. She wants to see her savior. She wants to see the person who had meant so much to her in her life. She's not ready to just to leave like everyone else. So she's lingering. Verse 16, Jesus said to her, Mary, he just called her name. So now all of a sudden, it's clicking that this is not the gardener here. This is Jesus that I'm talking to. She turned to him and cried out, Rabboni, which is Hebrew for teacher. She recognized him. Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to the father. But go find my brothers and tell them I am ascending to my father and your father and to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. And then she told him, told them what he said. So this is a different message than the message when he gave to all the women and said, go tell my disciples to meet me in Galilee. He actually appeared to Mary Magdalene alone by herself the way this is reading and, and, and blessed her. She was blessed to see Jesus. And what I want us to see out of that is that, um, uh, don't be so quick to leave the presence of God. She was, she loved the Lord so much that she was willing to stay there as long as it took until she could see her Lord, until she could get a glimpse of him. And I'm wondering how often, when we're going through things or when, when we're in the middle of a battle, how willing are we to hold on and not let go until we get a glimpse of him? So we can at least see his face. So we can see, uh, so he can give us that word of encouragement. You know, how quick are we to throw the towel in and say, okay, well, he's gone. You know, no, no, I will not let you go until you bless me. I'm going to stay right here, Jesus, until I get an answer from you. I'm going to stay here right here on my face, uh, crying out to you until you show me something, till you take me to another level, till you, till you deliver me from this thing. And you will be rewarded. He says, you, you have not because you ask not. He also tells us, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. She was seeking her savior and she found him. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open unto you. For everyone that asks, receive everyone. It seeks fine and him that knock, the door will be open to him. God is telling us something here. Don't be so quick to give up. Hold on to his unchanging hand. Cry out to God till you see a change. And watch how he shows up for you. Just like he showed up to Mary. Because she lingered. Because she stayed there. Because she didn't just throw the towel in. Sometimes you got to linger in his presence if you really want to see him. Amen. That's a revelation. I'm telling you, you got to, sometimes you got to linger in his presence if you really want to see him. Amen. Amen. Because he will reveal himself to you. Amen. So let's go back to the 28th chapter of Matthew. Verse 16 says, then, uh, then the 11 disciples left for Galilee going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some of them doubted. 
And Jesus came and told his disciples, I have given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So Matthew ends with the great, what we call the Great Commission, where he's telling the disciples, go and, and preach my word. Tell people about Jesus, amen? And that, that Great Commission is not just for the disciples, it's for us as well. Uh, we're supposed to be about our Father's business, going to uh, preach and teach and talk about Jesus, amen? See if I'm on my notes here. It says when um so 40 days after his after his resurrection, Jesus is going to ascend into the Father. But we want to talk about before he ascends to his father, some of those appearances that he had, that he had. And so uh, we got time to go over this and just want to give you some of those appearances because the following was obtained uh, from my Thompson Chain Reference Bible. I showed you my Bible I've had since I was 14. It's kind of raggedy, but it's an excellent study Bible. Um, but it lists the, the different appearances and it says sometimes people have different opinions, op opinions about who he appeared to first and, and whatnot. But these are the ones that is listed that he appeared to. First one being Mary Magdalene. Uh, and you find that in John chapter 20, verse 15 through 18. Mary was at the tomb and she was weeping because she did not know where Jesus was and Jesus appeared to her. We just read about that uh, and told her not to touch him because he had to ascend to his father. And he also told her to go tell the disciples that he must ascend. So the first one was Mary. The second per uh, group that he appeared to was to the other women. Jesus appeared before the women and told them to tell his disciples to meet him in Galilee where they would see him. So Mary Magdalene, he appeared to all the other women that had came to the tomb. Uh, then in 1 Corinthians, and, and when he appeared to the women, you can find that in Matthew 28, 9, and in Luke 24, 10. Then he appeared to Peter. And uh, we don't have a lot of details about that one, but in 1 Corinthians 15, 5, it tells he appeared before Peter. And in Luke 24, 34. Then he appeared before two disciples that were on the, on the road to Emmaus. Uh, as they were talking, Jesus appeared to them and he not only appeared to them, but he started, uh, uh, they didn't recognize him. So Jesus expounded the scriptures, starting with Moses and all the prophets that spoke concerning Jesus. And he explained it to them. And then he went to their home and he ate with them. And then after he ate with them, he vanished before their very eyes. So Jesus is, is showing them that I have, I did, I have resurrected. I'm no longer in the grave. I'm not dead anymore. Then he appeared to 10 disciples ex except Thomas. Thomas was absent. Uh, and he, he ate with them. Um, he, he allowed them. He says they, then they believed that Jesus breathed on them, telling them to receive the Holy Ghost. He also told them that they would receive, that they had power to forgive sins. Now, remember, Thomas was missing. So then a week later, because all these other appearances we just talked about was all on Sunday. So now a week after Sunday, Jesus appeared to all 11 of the disciples, including Thomas. And remember, Thomas said, I'm not going to believe unless I can put my hand in his in the holes and, and you know where he was pierced. And that's the only way I'm going to believe. So Jesus told him, he said, put your Put your hands in my hands, you know, and Thomas did believe. And Jesus told him, he, after he said, he says, all of those who, all of us who believe in Jesus now are blessed. Because when Thomas was able to put his hands in Jesus' hand, that's when he believed. But the scripture says in John 20, verse 28, blessed are those who believe who have not seen. That's talking about you and me. We weren't able to put our hands in his hand to see the holes in his hands or, or to touch our, touch his side to see where they had stabbed him in his side. But we still believe. So then after he appeared to the 11, then he appeared to uh, seven of the disciples while they were fishing. They were fishing. They hadn't caught anything. And Jesus was on the shore. And he told them, well, cast your net on the other side. They cast their net on the other side and they caught so many fish. 
And then Jesus actually built a fire for them and he ate some fish with them right there on the beach. And they uh, were able to see that he had risen. He was real. They knew it was Jesus. And that was the same time also when he told Peter to uh, feed his sheep. And we'll get into that later. But he told Peter to feed his sheep and asked him if he loved him. And if you love me, feed my sheep. And asked him that three times. Then also, uh, he appeared to the 11 apostles, as we just read about the Great Commission. He also appeared to 500 brethren. He appeared to, and you find that in 1 Corinthians 15, 6. And he appeared to James, Jesus' brother. And that's found in 1 Corinthians 15, 7. And with these other appearances, we don't get a lot of information. We just get the fact that he appeared to them. And then, uh, of course, on the, day, on the day of ascension, of ascension, he appeared to the 11 apostles. And Jesus also appeared to them and told them, instructed them to stay in Jerusalem until they received power from the Holy Ghost, power from on high. Uh, one other person he appeared to later on was Paul. Paul talked about how Jesus had appeared to him uh, later in life. Remember when uh, he struck Peter, uh, struck Paul down, uh, when he was on the road to Damascus and asked him why was he persecuting him. So Jesus made all those appearances, those 40 days that he was here, he made a lot of appearances uh to people before he ascended amen amen but i but one thing i just want you to remember tonight is that we need to be like mary magdalene and we need to be desperate to see our savior and don't be so quick to give up and to throw the towel in when you're when you're searching when you're seeking when you need an answer from god she lingered and because she lingered in the present because she lingered because she wanted to see her savior he appeared to her amen so just Ponder on that and think about that the next time that you're crying out to God. If I just stay here, if I just wait before him, he's going to answer me. Amen. Because he loves me just that much. Amen. So we're going to close with that. I uh, just want to uh, invite you to my channel. If you have not received Christ into your life, uh, please go on my channel called Read Through the Bible Elder Linda on YouTube. There are two uh, videos there on a playlist called The Sinner's Prayer and also uh, a tape called Teaching About Salvation, which will explain to you why you need Jesus and give you all the scriptures that show us about our salvation and teach us about our salvation. Amen. Amen. Let's just close in prayer. Thank you, Father. Father, we just, we thank you for this, this message and this teaching that we had on tonight. Holy Spirit, we thank you, Lord God, that you're teaching us how to be patient, Lord. Father, we won't just rush in and out of your presence, oh God, but that we learn to Linger in your presence. Learn to wait on you, Jesus. Learn to wait until we get an answer from you. Learn to wait until we see your face, oh God, just like Mary Magdalene did. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We praise you and honor you. We thank you for all that you've done for us, dear Jesus. We ask, Lord God, that you would continue to, to lead us and guide us and direct us and be our Lord and Savior. And we appreciate you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, and I'll see you next week.